Hi. Okay. Hi. We're going live. We're testing this out to see if it's working. Let's see if anyone hops on here and okay. see if anyone hops on here. We're going to make this much faster than last week is what she's telling me. No one's here yet. That's all right. We're live in the virtual event page. Waiting to see if anyone joins so we can see if this is working. working. Live. Yay! Hi, there's live? people there. There. Hi, Ron. Hi, everyone. We were waiting to see if this live was working, Wait. but it's working. Before I talk anymore, can you guys just tell me? Can you hear me today? Hopefully, this works. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Melia. Hi, Leanne. Hi, Laura. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Ronnie. Hi, Sarah. Can anyone hear us? Yes, Laura. Can you hear me? I see you typing. Can you guys hear me, someone? Yes? I see all of you joining and watching. But someone has to say if you can hear me just before I start talking. Anyone? Anyone? Find it? Hmm? Eliana's working on it. Can you guys hear? Hopefully you can hear. Yes. Or else, yes? yes? Ronnie said yes. Okay. Ronnie said yes. Hi. All right, gonna try to make this much shorter than last week so you guys don't have to spend a whole lot of time in the kitchen today. You can get these in the oven and ready for dinner. Um, this fun breakfast class came out of a couple requests during last week's virtual holla bake. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me, hopefully it goes well. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Eliana's here, to go ahead and answering for me. Um, I'll try not to talk too fast. I'll try to make sure you can hear me and just Shout out any questions as we bake together. Hopefully you uh, saw the post with the ingredients um, and you have your stuff ready to go if you're baking along with me. Um, I do want to share that my barakas is definitely more of a method than it is a recipe. So I tried my best to write it into a recipe form and get it ready for you guys um, to follow along either later um, or while we're baking this together. Um, but as I go, I'll show you what I mean by more of a method because there's so many kinds of barakas you can make. You can make them with meat, you can make them with potatoes, you can make them with all different kinds of cheeses, you can do broccoli and cheese, you can do artichoke, you can do leek. Um, I picked just two of the most basic, simpler ones that are easy to do together today that don't require cooking or prep work. Um, and so hopefully it works out great for us to make them together and then you can adapt the recipes for yourself and any fillings that you and your family like. Um, so I'm gonna start with the feta and olive. Um, super easy and um, easy to mix together in a bowl. So a large mixing bowl. I like to use, this is the can that I use, the um, Israeli pitted green olives. Pitted meaning the pits are already taken out. Um, sometimes, just for an example, I will use the Trader Joe's ones if that's all I can find and those are really good also. So about half a cup, um, I took them out and I just did a rough chop this morning. So if you haven't chopped your green olives yet, give yourself a minute just to chop them up quickly. Um, doesn't have to be perfect. You can leave them larger pieces. You can do small, you know, smaller chunks, however you like, but half a cup of pitted green olives. Um, side note, if you don't like olives, then you would just have cheese barracas and that's good too. Um, if you don't like green olives and you like black olives, super yummy also. Um, that's why this is so easy and customizable to um, make anything you like for your kids once you understand the method. I'll do pizza barracas. Um, I think I mentioned broccoli and cheese, mashed potato with caramelized onion, um, meat or ground turkey with or without some leftover rice, easy to throw in. So really anything, it's going to taste good when it's in puff pastry, trust me. So half a cup of green olives right into the bowl. All right, about a cup of feta um, crumbled. If you have it already crumbled, I crumbled some of that up here, great. If it's the um, Israeli or Greek style feta that comes in a block like this, 
you want to just crumble it up. Um, I washed my hands right before we started, so I'm going to just use my hands. It's so much easier. I'll show you. Um, just crumble this um, into small bite-sized pieces. Um, we want the, the feta, not too many big chunks, because you want it to mix all together and make a nice creamy filling to go inside your breakfast. Can you write the ingredients for the next salad you're going to be doing? Um, the ingredients... Oh, I can copy paste it. You know what? She can just take a picture of the recipe. It's posted in the event page. How do I copy paste um, The picture with the... Oh, no, she can't. Oh, no. oh, just turn it around and show it. Like this? Yeah. It's, 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 it'll flip around. Oh, is it mirror image? Is this is the it? ingredients. If you want to screenshot it really quick, you can screenshot it. To look at it for yourself, I'll also type it into the chat right now. It's like having my own personal assistant, which is fabulous when you're a mom of four. Okay, I need something to All right, so I just crumbled up my feta. And I'm going to put about a cup of feta. This was about a cup of feta right into the bowl. Next ingredient, two eggs, all right? Two eggs, one at a time. Grab a fork. Just give those like a quick light beep. Doesn't have Whoa. to be. Whoa. What, do we have questions, no. comments, no? All right. So two eggs, right into the bowl. Okay, I like to add some um, cottage cheese or ricotta cheese or sometimes even mozzarella to this mixture. Something to add a little bit of um, more creaminess and to hold it all together a little bit along with the feta and the olives. So I'm going to do ricotta cheese today. I uh, know I'm doing cottage cheese today. If you have ricotta cheese, great. If you even have cream cheese and that's all you have, great. If you want to add a little bit of mozzarella, half a cup of just a third um, or second cheese rather, but a third ingredient along with your olives and your, and your feta. So I'm just adding about a half a cup of cottage cheese right into the bowl. And if you don't like cottage cheese, I know a lot of people don't, you don't taste it when it's inside the bread cup, but like I said, substitute anything else um, that you like. But I'm going to go ahead and just season it to taste. Um, the feta is salty already, so I'm going to add a little bit of kosher salt, but just be light on the salt because you don't want your bread too, too salty. So I think I wrote, what did I write else? What? Salt and pepper to taste. So, you know, maybe half a teaspoon-ish. Remember that kosher salt is saltier. If we don't have olives, salt. can we make this one a pizza, or will you be doing that after? I'm not doing pizza today, so absolutely. Um, you can either do pizza with tomato sauce down um, on your puff pastry, or, or you can do it with um, fresh tomatoes. If you don't have tomato sauce and you want to do fresh tomato, you can do fresh tomato and basil um, with mozzarella, which is great. I've done that before like a caprese um, barreca, so that's really good too. So whoever asked about that, just substitute however you want. It's really more of a method, and once you get um, comfortable with the method and sort of the consistency that you want for whatever filling you're using, you can totally adapt it to whatever you like. So um, I did salt. I'm going to do a little bit of pepper. Need louder. Need I mean, louder. Okay. Is everyone else having trouble with the volume? How is that volume? Is that sounding pretty good? Hopefully. I hope, I hope it's loud enough. Um, I will talk as loud as I can, and then um, if it doesn't, if it's still not loud enough, let us know or, or put a question in the chat and we will answer, okay? Um, if you know me, you know I talk quiet. If you don't know me, I talk really quiet. So I'm doing the best I can to talk loud enough. It's not easy. Um, all right, so I'm going to show you what this mixture looks like. Ooh. So you want it to be, um, the eggs are going to bind it together, so don't leave out the eggs unless you're vegan. Um, leave out the eggs, clearly, and then well, you're going to want... also wouldn't be using cheese if they 
<laughs> you would be, well, you could use non-dairy cheese, of course. So if you're a vegan and you're using non-dairy cheese and you're not using eggs, I would use maybe a little bit of almond flour. I'd say it's better than last week. Um, oh, good. Better than last week. We're, we're working on it. Um, anything just to bind it together a little bit as it goes inside your pillow. Okay, so again, this is how I'm seasoning this. Add something different. If you like some garlic, if you like more onion, um, which I'll do into the spinach one, feel free to throw that in. Um, substitute the olives, make it pizza, however you like. Um, it's really just the method, and I'm going to do one with the puff pastry squares and then one with the full sheets. I generally just use the full sheets. I make um, really nice big barakas that I like to serve in slices, um, but it's also fun when you're doing a few different barakas, like this will be our Shabbat dinner, to have a few different styles and shapes. You want to use a big baking sheet lined with parchment paper. I was able to find these squares that I like at the kosher market. I don't know if I'm able to find. I know it's tough, and I know a lot of you were only able to find the sheets. Is there a difference between phyllo dough and puff pastry? There is a difference between phyllo dough and puff pastry. Um, phyllo dough is much thinner and needs to be um, layered. So if you're working with phyllo dough and not the puff pastry, Follow the, ingredient, the instructions, rather, on your package of what it says for the dough, and then the filling and the process is the same, but the dough bakes a little bit differently, and um, and the method's a little bit different because the sheets are thinner. And I would just preheat my oven really quickly. Um, the packages, at least from the Israeli ovens, from the conversion to Celsius Fahrenheit, says 385. I bake them at 400. Um, Mom, can you use eggs in the meat version? Or do you use eggs in the Oh, meat good question. In the meat version and the mashed potato version, no eggs. Um, if you go back to this event a couple nights ago for Yom Atzimut, Israel Independence Day, I made a meat baraka and a mashed potato baraka. You'll see the pictures. Um, meat baraka is just ground beef. Um, you can add some sauteed onions. Sometimes if I have leftover rice, I'll add that in. Um, so it's a meat and rice combo. Um, seasoned however you like. It's seasoned. Um, you could use leftover taco meat. You could use Italian season. I like to do um, more Middle Eastern Israeli seasoning. So I'll do baharat or cumin. Um, garlic, those kind of seasonings. Um, mashed potato can either be just plain potato, or I love caramelized onions, sometimes with some scallion. Um, sometimes cheese, mashed potato with cheese is great. Um, you could also do meat and mashed potato together, but those don't need eggs. Um, they'll hold together on their own, but when you have cheese and vegetable filling, you need an egg to bind it together. Um, otherwise, it will just expand and your bracket won't bake nicely. So if you were not able to find these little squares, is the mixture going to make one or two? So this mixture for this fed on olive recipe, I'm doing the squares, um, and this should make about 12. You could fill them less and get some more. You could fill them fuller and make them even bigger and get a little bit less. The next spinach and cheese one, I'm going to do one full sheet, and you'll see that. Um, so you may have a little, more. you may have a little mixture left over when you're done, and you run out of pastry, and that's okay. Or, more question? Um, if we are doing these in on a sheet, should we roll it out at all? So if you're doing these on a sheet, you don't need to roll it out. You can do two things. You can either take your sheet and cut it into six or eight smaller squares, um, so down the middle, lengthwise, and then across, um, or you can keep it whole um, and fill it down the middle, which is what I'm going to do for the next one. Maybe I should have started with that, but it's too late. We're here. Um, Fill it down the middle so that you'll have, um, you divide your dough into thirds, fill right down the middle and leave the two sides open and just hold off on baking it for a second until I do the next barakah and then you'll see how to fill it and prepare it, okay? Um, how, oh, oh, are you going to do the dessert one too? I am going to do dessert one too if you guys are around and you're interested. And Absolutely. then what if we only have sheets? If you only have the sheets, totally fine. Go ahead and either unroll it and cut it into squares or keep it full um, and fill it down the center and then just put it to the side for a second until I do the spinach one and you'll see how I fill and prepare it and then you can do the same for the feta one. How do you add tomato sauce in it? If you're doing tomato sauce for pizza, you're gonna spread it down the dough. So you're gonna spread it down the center of the dough. Imagine your dough in thirds, spread it down the center, fill it with mozzarella, any other filling, onion, um, olives, anything like that. Someone said my squares are smaller. If your squares are smaller, don't worry. Um, you can just, you're going to fill them in the center and fold them over and it will be fine. They'll just be a little bit smaller. You should have enough filling. Is the next one the one with spinach or should we use all of this up now? The next one is the one with spinach. So all the, um, 
ingredients that you made now in your bowl, use this up now, and then the next recipe will start over. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and give it one more stir just to make sure the eggs are all mixed in. You don't want them sitting at the bottom of the bowl. You're going to take a generous teaspoon full. These squares are a little bigger, you're right, whoever said that. So if you have the ones from the kosher market um, that look like this, or these French puff pastry squares, they're five by five. It's a little bit bigger maybe than some of them. I don't know what, maybe someone can shout out what the size is that they have. Um, maybe do like more like um, two or three spoonfuls of mixture in the middle, okay? So you want to fill it in the middle, but you want to give yourself enough room to be able to fold it. So you just go ahead and take your puff pastry. There's two ways to do it. You can do them as triangles, or you could do them as um, rectangles, so they're like pockets. If I'm doing one kind of bracha, I like the triangles. If I'm serving multiple kinds at a time, I will vary the way I prepare them so that I know what's in them and they present differently and really nicely. So I'll have triangle ones, rectangle ones, circle ones, spirals, but for today, basic um, triangle. So you're gonna go ahead, I wanted to grab one more clean fork, Grab a fork for yourself if you don't have one. And hopefully you can see what I'm doing, but you're just gonna go ahead and fill it. And then you're just gonna close it over and use your fork like this to crimp it. Don't worry if a little of the egg or a little of the cheese comes out the side. It'll just, um, you know, bake together as they go in the oven. So you wanna just go ahead and fill them like that. I'm filming over here too, so let's see, like, like that. Um, if you're having a little bit of trouble getting your dough to stick, just get a little bit of water, wet your finger, and just run it around the edges. Sometimes that happens after they've been sitting out for a while. And just remember, before you fill each one, just give your mixture a quick stir again, because the eggs are going to settle to the bottom, and you don't want that to happen when you fill. So just a generous like tablespoon or so in the middle. And this obviously is going to take us a couple minutes. I want to close it here. Um, so ask questions. So feel free while I'm just getting these assembled to ask questions. Um, I feel like I should do, if I ever do this again, on Zoom so that you guys can, I can hear you and you can just shout out your questions. Um, remember the puff pastry will expand a little bit while it's in the oven. So give yourself room on the baking sheet, please. Um, but just go ahead and fill up your, your barrettes. Okay. I think you said this. If we only have sheets, we should hold off. You will do it next. Um, if you only have sheets, you should... Um, Tell them you have two options. You have two options. Again, you can either um, cut them into squares. So cut it lengthwise and then cut it crosswise into squares. You should be able to get um, six or eight squares depending on the size of your sheet. I don't know what size sheets you have. Um, or you can leave it whole. Um, unroll it with the short side against yourself. So as you unroll it this way, short side, long side, short side. So it's like vertical at you. And imagine it in thirds, put your filling down the middle and then just put it off to the side for a second because as we do the spinach one, I'm gonna prepare it that way and then you'll see how to fill it. Um, so if this is really just a matter, like someone texted me yesterday and was like, my husband hates cheese, great. Do mashed potato, do meat. They're like, good idea. Someone else said, my family doesn't like olives. Great, don't put olives in it. Um, it's really a matter of what your family will eat, what you like, so what ingredients like you have. I'm feeling sad won't let me open without permission from the host. Well, um, what, what won't open? The video? Something won't open? Um, who is that? Uh, Rabbi Sarah Horonsky. Hi, Sarah. You mean the video? Happy birthday, Sarah! Happy birthday, what so won't open? Um, what if I don't have mozzarella cheese for cheese one? You, you can, can use, use whatever. If you don't have mozzarella, you can use, um, you can use cottage cheese, you can use feta, you can use cheddar, you can use jack, you can use, um, you know, even a cream cheese filling, or cottage cheese, any kind of filling. Um, mozzarella is really nice just because it melts well and gives it like a good texture, but it's all gonna, um, come together really well. Uh, Sarah, I want to get back to your question. What won't open? The video? Wait, one more question. Uh, where did you buy the French square puff pastry? So these I buy at, um, I live in, um, in the Valley, so I buy them at Benny Kosher on Fallbrook. 
but most kosher markets, Supercell has them, I know, um, Ventura Kosher has them. Um, so that's where I buy these pastry squares. These are even a little bigger than I like. Um, you can see they're like not even appetizer size, it's more of a meal size. I'm only gonna get six on this tray um, because they're just a little bit bigger and uh, I like to give them space to prep up in the oven. But if you can have a look really quick at this, um, here you go. So I've got six barracas ready to go. All they need on top is the egg wash and the sesame seeds. So I'm going to take my bowl back that I beat the eggs in before. Cambridge has the same kind of kosher. Yeah, Cambridge, probably any kosher market will have the squares. Um, I actually use the sheets much more than the squares. Um, that's sort of my specialty. Um, I make all different kinds of breakfast. I'll do them for brunch. I'll do them for dinner. Um, so the sheets are great. That's all you can find. Someone said... Um, if I only use two types of cheese, do I need to add an egg? Um, unless you have an aversion to eggs, it's nice to add it to hold it together. Um, you don't have to. It just makes the filling um, hold together and cook up a little bit better, I think, than without. Yes, she's recording it for the replay later. Yes, we are recording it. Hopefully it'll work this time. If you guys were with us baking hollow last week. It was live and it was supposed to record and the video like just totally disappeared. So um, egg wash, which is um, egg with a teaspoon of water. I didn't go to the sink and get water. So I'm just improvising at the moment, but you wanna add a drop of water to your egg. It just helps it spread a little better. I'm just doing this sort of quick so I don't waste so much of your time on a very busy Friday quarantine Shabbat afternoon. Um, but like I said, feel free to ask questions as I'm doing this because I want to make sure that I answer everyone's questions and you guys understand the method. And if I'm going too fast, let me know. I'll slow down. Sesame seeds, not toasted. Jackie said I decided to make my hollow while watching you do the brekka. Who said that? Jackie. Jackie who? Leibson. Oh, Jackie Leibson. I love you. Jackie's my very special cousin from Seattle and we're having Family Zoom. Family. What about the Zoom pizza side? one? Is it just cheese and sauce or do you mix the cheese with the egg? So the pizza one, no egg. Pizza one, I wouldn't do egg. Um, pizza one, I usually do sauce and cheese and then you can do a filling. Um, onion, caramelized onion, olive, anything you like. Um, but I wouldn't do egg if you're doing pizza. Sometimes it's nice with fresh tomato um, or fresh tomato and basil um, is really nice too, but I wouldn't do egg. Sorry, my nose is itchy. I wouldn't do egg in that one. Um, if you guys know me, you'll know that I'm not a big talker, which seems funny. And I did a hollow baking class this morning for my camp. Um, so it's a lot of talking for me in a day, and I don't normally talk a lot. So I hope you can hear me and understand. So oh, in temperature. 400. Um, the package, most puff pastry packages will say 385. It's a conversion from Celsius. Um, I mean, it's a weird conversion because usually they're... Um, Israeli products, at least the ones I use, they say 385, which is weird. I know we don't usually cook things on 385, so I do it at 400. Um, but you want to keep an eye on it until it's golden brown. So I still have um, six here. No, how many did I make? Five. And I have filling enough for another five in the bowl. Um, I'll fill them later once uh, I'm off with you guys, but I wanted to just be able to show you everything without taking too much time. So I'm going to go ahead and just stick these in the oven. Um, we've got egg wash. Can you see? Is that a good view? Egg wash and sesame. I'm showing this video over here. Egg wash and sesame. Don't worry if a little bit of the egg runs off. It'll bake in the oven. Remember, you want to be using parchment paper um, or a silk hat or tin foil with cooking spray. You never want to bake directly on your cooking sheet. Same with the challah, same with the breakfast. Um, it'll burn on the bottom and it'll stick and it'll be a big mess. You'll have to scrap it. So a parchment paper in the oven, 400 degrees. I like to bake them at the top. I like to check everything after 15 minutes. Um, my oven's not totally calibrated, so I always set my timer for 15 minutes, and then I see what's going on, and then I'll revisit the recipe. Um, this says 12 to 18 minutes, um, so I'll probably peak a little bit sooner. Um, 
you'll also be able to sort of start to smell when they're uh, when they're egg wash on both sides. No, egg wash only on the top. The bottom side will stay flat on your baking surface. Um, egg wash on the top. If you don't like sesame seeds, you don't have to put them. Um, it just looks pretty and it's nice on top, but you can just do egg wash and leave them totally plain. Again, if I'm making multiple varieties at once, some will have seeds, some will be plain, some may have something else on top um, just to differentiate them. Um, but it's nice to put sesame seeds on the top if you like them. All right, I'm gonna move on to the trickier one, or not trickier, but the one people always are asking about. I'm gonna grab a paper bowl really, really fast. Um, only pizza, only mozzarella or ricotta too? Um, that's up to you, the pizza one. You could put a little ricotta. Um, you could do half mozzarella, half ricotta. Um, if you are going to do the ricotta, make sure it's not watery at all. You know, some of them are um, more liquidy, or I think the lower fat ones are a little more liquidy. You don't want a lot of extra liquid if you're not using the eggs. Um, but really, once you get the, um, the method down, um, you can really substitute and, and do any kind of varieties How long in oven that you like. So it, I wrote on the recipe um, 12 to 18 minutes, and that's because it depends on your oven and the size of your pastries. That's for the squares. The big ones take longer. Um, I like to check things and then give it a few minutes longer. My oven isn't totally calibrated, um, so I'm baking it at 400, but I like to check it a few minutes before I know it's going to be done, and then I always like to rotate my baking sheets. I do it with my challah. Um, I do it with cookies a lot, for sure with barekas, so that um, the side um, closest to the front gets a chance to be in the back and bake evenly as well. Sometimes I'll bake two long bareca strips on one baking sheet, so I want them to bake evenly, but I always will rotate my baking sheet um, at some point during the process, so that's about how long. Am I talking too fast? Are we good to move on? Any questions on the feta and olive, on the squares? On anything else before um, before we move on? No? Okay, awesome. So, spinach and cheese. Um, just like with the feta and olive, you can do just cheese. Um, spinach and cheese is similar to like a Greek spanakopita that does use phyllo dough, which is flakier and crunchier. Um, puff pastry is butterier and like more layers and so delicious with anything inside. It's kind of like anything fried can't be bad, right? Anything in pastry dough can't be bad. Um, so here we go. Spinach and cheese, again, substitute um, as it works for you. Um, the spinach is nice because it holds things together. So if you're not using the spinach, you may want to just check the, check, check the texture of your mixture to make sure it's not too liquidy before you fill your bread. So this was one package, Trader Joe's bag of frozen chopped spinach, defrosted and drained super well, um, either in a colander or you put it in a clean dish towel and ring and ring and squeeze out all the liquid and moisture until you're left with just the spinach. Um, I think the boxes and bags are 10 ounces. Um, if you're using fresh spinach, um, I know my very sweet family, friend Leanne was using fresh spinach. I don't know if anyone else was using fresh spinach and that's all you have. A little fast. Maybe give them a little discount. Okay, Leanne, I'll slow down, I'm sorry. Um, I have four kids and I teach four-year-olds, so I'm used to everything really quick, so I have to remind myself to slow down with the talking. Um, if you're using fresh spinach, you have two options. You can absolutely use it raw, a few people have asked me, because it's going in the oven for about 30 minutes. It will cook in the mixture. Um, I would chop off the, the stems um, or the ends if you're using fresh, or fresh spinach. Um, you can use it raw. Um, the other thing you can do is saute it ahead of time or blanch it, um, or steam it, you know, anything to cook your spinach ahead of time if you want. But if you do that, just like the frozen chopped spinach, make sure you drain out all the moisture so you don't have a really wet mixture um, going into your bread. Does that make sense? All right. So I'm just, like I said, I don't use recipes, but I had to write it out for you guys, and I'm trying to make sure that I'm doing exactly what I, what I told you I was doing so that you can follow along. Um, after you make them once or twice too, tear out the recipe and throw it away because you'll know what you like and your family likes and you'll know how it's supposed to feel. Um, and then you'll, you'll just eyeball it. And sometimes it's for me, I have puff pastry in the freezer. What can I, what do I have in the house to fill it with? A little this, a little that. And you can just throw things together. Um, 
artichoke hearts is really, leeks and artichoke hearts is really good with, with jack cheese or mozzarella cheese. Um, potato, I think I said, and caramelized onion is one of our favorites. Um, sometimes I'll do broccoli and cheese, but instead of the triangles, I'll fold them into rectangle shapes, and it's like those, what do you call them? Hot pockets or lean pockets or something. Um, that's really good. Um, so any, any filling, like I said, it's more about the method. So I just got frozen chopped spinach in the bowl. So sorry, I missed the spinach. Okay, one last time, frozen chopped spinach um, in a box or a bag. This was a Trader Joe's bag. So I um, opened it up, let it defrost in the sink just in a colander for a couple hours. I took it out this morning. Um, then I just give it a rinse and I drain it really well. Either use your hand and push it through the colander or put it in a clean dish towel and twist it and squeeze out all the moisture. If you only have fresh spinach, you can either leave it raw, it will cook. I know it seems weird, but it's going in the oven for about 30 minutes, so it will cook in the oven. Or you can give it a quick saute um, or steam or blanch it um, on the stove and then make sure that there's not a lot of liquid in that either. You want to drain all the liquid. You don't want the liquid making your puff pastry soggy. So hopefully everyone's caught up and making sense. Again, feel free to ask questions in the chat. My wonderful daughter is here. Um, I think she should be in school. Should we be in school? No. Oh, she's done. She finished the school. Um, and um, she's helping me with all the questions. So go ahead and she's reading them to me if you have questions, and then we'll, uh, I'll, I'll respond with the answers. So frozen chopped spinach drains in the bowl. Um, this one says three quarters of a cup of mozzarella, half a cup of feta, and a quarter to a half a cup of ricotta. You're going to want about one and a half cups of cheese total. If you only like mozzarella, use only mozzarella. If you only like feta, use only feta. Um, so that's why it's really nice and customizable for whatever it is that you have and that your family likes. Um, so I'm going to do about a cup of three quarters of a cup or so of mozzarella. Just shredded mozzarella. If you have fresh on a block, freshly shredded, great. And this is what I had left of the feta from before. It's about a half a cup of just crumbled feta. Um, I love Israeli or Greek feta. If you can find it in the block, it just tastes so much better than the already crumbled. But I know it's a little more expensive and harder to find. So if you only can find the feta crumbles, it's great too. I do uh, not- Feta, ricotta, and mozzarella. Yes. I do not like um, goat cheese or blue cheese. But if you do, that would probably be really good in this too, because um, you would like the flavor. I know, Ronnie, you like goat cheese, so you can use goat cheese. But yeah, if you only have the crumbled feta like this, that's fine too. Um, I had a block of it also, and I used the rest of that, and then just substituted a little bit of the already crumbled. And I'm going to throw in just another half a cup or so of cottage cheese to this one just gives it like a really good creamy texture. Um, my kids don't love cottage cheese. They don't even know, well now they know, but they don't even know it's in here and they don't say I don't like it. So yeah. I just put cottage cheese. Sometimes. See? She said to you, you shouldn't put cottage cheese. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna give that a quick mix before I add my eggs just to like check it out and see what's going on. I've got spinach, um, shredded mozzarella, feta cheese, and a little bit of ricotta in the bowl. And then I'm going to do usually a meter cook, but it's, it's all uh, All right, so I'm going to do two eggs into this also. Crack them one at a time into a bowl because I don't like to get shell. Oh, look at that. I never get shell, and I got shell. You know the trick for getting shell out, right? You use the shell get the shell and it sticks to itself. So one egg is going to go right in. And the second egg is going to go in. And this one I like to season a little bit more than I do the olive and feta because the olives and feta both are salty and have flavor. Um, spinach has less flavor by itself. So this one I like to season um, with a little bit of kosher salt again. Again, you have feta, but you have less feta. So you can add a little bit more salt. Here, I like to use kosher salt. And a 
little bit of pepper. Um, and then I love this in everything. I don't know if you guys use this. This is Trader Joe's onion salt. I love my cameras on the mirror. It's so weird. This is Trader Joe's onion salt. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little, not too much. Starting to overheat. It's making a lot of candles. Because I put salt already, but a little bit of onion salt and a little bit of garlic powder. If you have garlic salt, use that. If you have fresh garlic, use that. Is the sound okay for you guys? I hope so. Yeah. Can someone answer if the sound is okay? Um, Eliana wanted to just double check. Anybody that's not busy baking, cooking? And then you just want to give it a really good mix. I know there are some people that taste this raw mixture to see how it's seasoned. I don't want to eat raw egg spinach cheese mixture. It does not sound good to me. So I just kind of trust that I've given it enough flavor. If you're worried, you could be like... Good. Smells good. I'm gonna just add like a drop more salt. Um, again, it's yes. fries of gas. Thank you, Ronnie. Um, it's really flexible. So, um, we're all saying yes. I think it's like a little delayed. So we don't answer oh, it's a little delayed. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad you can hear. So, for whatever reason, maybe I used less ricotta, but I think it's the spinach. This mixture is always a little bit less wet. A little bit less wet than the um, the, the other one that I did, um, because the spinach helps absorb the eggs and the moisture from the cheese. So I'm going to show you what this looks like. I don't know if you can see that. I'm showing you into the bowl over here. So it just looks like a really yummy um, filling. You want to just get it all combined really well. Okay, this is the fun part. This is that everyone's always asking me how do you. How do you do these? So I'm gonna talk. Oh yeah. Sorry, helping my daughter while doing this. Did you add eggs already? Yeah. Yes. Um, I added two eggs also to this mixture. Um, so that had two eggs, a box or a bag of frozen chopped spinach, um, about three quarters or a cup of mozzarella, half a cup or so of feta, and half a cup of ricotta. You want about one and a half to two cups of cheese. You know, you could be like, I really like cheese, and this needs more, and I'm going to add more, right? Like, it's just, it's really, um, it's not an exact science. It's totally a method versus a recipe. Um, but you just want it to be like a nice combination. Um, the two eggs will help bind it together. Um, you need the eggs. So try not to leave those out if, if it's an option for you. All right, I'm gonna try to go slow as I can without wasting your time on this, just to show you. Um, everyone always thinks it's confusing, and once you see it, you'll say, oh, that's not that confusing. I totally get it now. So my puff pastry comes in a roll like this. I think the Pepperidge Farm and the Trader Joe's comes folded in half. If anyone's using those, you can you know, correct me if I'm wrong. And then I also was able to get some at Smart and Final it was like a big commercial pack, and it came in a big flat box where the sheets are already flat. So there's three options. Your sheet will be flat, your sheet will be folded in half, or your sheet will be in a roll like this. Can't think of any other options. Um, these are my favorite. These are from also the kosher market, and they come in a purple and yellow cellophane wrapped package with two rolls in one package. You're gonna let them defrost, about 20 minutes on the counter or a couple hours in the refrigerator. And you're just gonna unroll. In thirds. Yeah, don't do anything yet except just unroll if you have a roll. And if you have a fold it in half, unfold it. And you wanna lay it flat on your baking sheet. And then the cool thing about this is once it's unrolled, if you saw what I did, you just peel the plastic right off back and then that goes into the trash. So now you have either um, your roll that was unrolled or your folded one that was opened up or your sheet that was flat to begin with. So you don't need to roll these out um, any more than it's already rolled. That's the oven timer it's telling me these might be done. Let's check. All right, I'm rotating my pan. I'll show you really quick. They look so good. Let's look at the camera. Let's tip it down for a sec. 
but they're not fully done yet, so I'm turning it around and sticking them back in. So that was 15 minutes at 400. I turned it around, rotated the pan 180 degrees, and I'm giving it like another four minutes, and then I'll check them again, and I think they should be done. They smell really good, you guys. Okay, so back to this bread. Now, this is the one that I posted about the other day. Um, again, this works with any of the fillings. If we're using squares, just do the same, right? Correct. If you only have squares, do the same. It would be fun to change up the shape on this one, since you made those into triangles. Um, I would maybe fill this on the left side and take the right side and fold it over to seal it like a rectangular pocket, um, which is fun. You can also take turn it on a diagonal like a diamond, take two opposite corners, fold them to the middle, and then take the top and bottom corners, fold them to the middle, and it'll be like a little purse, they call it, or a little packet, um, which is a fun way. And then same thing, egg wash, topping, bake them. Um, I just think it's fun when you're making different varieties to prepare them different ways. But it all tastes the same. So that's it. So far I just have my sheet, okay? Showing this video over here. All right, so I wanna, um, have the short side along my stomach and have it vertically toward me. And I want to visualize my puff pastry sheet being in thirds. And I'm going to take my filling and I'm going to put it right down the middle. Some people are really visual and they like to actually score it very lightly with a butter knife um, into thirds so that they can visualize for themselves. And if that helps you, feel free to go ahead and do that. Just um, score it into even thirds and then you're going to fill right down the middle, and your left and right are going to be left alone for now. Um, I don't need to do that, so I'm just going to go ahead and fill it um, sort of right down the middle. And I just start at the bottom or the top, whatever mood I'm in. This smells really good, you guys. I smell the garlic. I smell the onion salt. Um, I have a feeling it's going to taste really good. It smells good, right? Um, and imagine if it smells good raw. Right, how good it's going to smell cooked. So you want to just evenly distribute your filling. Um, gosh, I keep saying how to do that. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Eliana made last night. Oh, she really did. She made last night a layered rainbow crepe cake. It's really cool. Oh, but last, yeah, last week she made dinner one night with her Gilmore Girls cookbook. She's a Gilmore Girls fan. And I had some puff pastry in the freezer, and she cut them into little squares and put circles. it in a, sorry, circles, cut them into little circles, and she put it in my mini cupcake tin, um, and she filled them with, this feta, spinach, feta and fresh spinach leaves, yeah. chopped fresh spinach and feta, um, and, and she made, and green onion, that's right, and she made little mini, and they were gone before we got to dinner. It was like, it was like a. Little mousse -mousse. All right, so I put that down into thirds, and I just sort of use my fork to um, pat it down a little and, and make it even. You can leave a little room at the top or the bottom, but um, this amount of filling, I use my bowl, there you go. Um, this amount of filling, really perfectly made um, one breca. So do you see this? I'll just stop for a quick sec so anyone can catch up if you're still working on yours. I'm going to show this video over here. But I've got my left and right. Um, this does not have a lot of moisture, which I like. There's just enough egg to hold it together, but there's no egg running, running off to the sides, which is what we want. Um, oh, that was four minutes already. Let me just check those really quick, and then we'll continue. Perfect, you guys. Let's see. I don't want to burn myself. You see? It looks so good. You see? It smells good. Can I try one? They're burning hot. She wants to try one already, but we'll let them uh, cool for a second. I don't know where to put it. I'll, I'll do it. are done. If you have yours in the oven, they should be just about done also, so don't forget to grab them out of the oven. Um, those look delicious. I'll go ahead and fill the rest of ours because I still have filling left. They smell so good, right? She said I'll go ahead and fill ours 
when we're done, but yours should be just about done too. All right, so this is the fun part. I like to use a small paring knife. Um, if you don't have a small paring knife, you can use um, just any sharp knife. You could even use a butter knife. Um, I love this little paring knife for this because it's just, just helpful and it's the tool that I always use. So there's three different ways to do this. Actually, there's four. The easiest way is to literally take the left side of puff pastry, flop it over the filling, take the right side, flop it over the, the, that, that piece of puff pastry, uh, make a couple slits down the top, and bake the whole thing. It will be beautiful, and you'll slice it when it's done, and you'll have these beautiful slice wedges of spinach and cheese breadness. That's the easiest way to do this, um, and it will still look fancy and delicious. The other three ways involve just the way that you slit your dough. So you can either cut slits, you're gonna cut them on parallel to each other on the, the left and the right sides of the dough. You can either cut them totally straight in parallel lines. I hope they can still hear us. There hasn't been a question in so long. You, Eleanor, she's checking if you can still hear us or am I talking to myself? The sensor's people on. The sensor's people on. It. Hopefully we're good. Um, why don't you turn up your volume? Yeah, sure. Because I was going to intro. Oh, that's true. Um, the, the other way you can do it is angle them at a diagonal, again, even, but a diagonal going up or at a diagonal going down. Um, it really doesn't matter which way you cut your strips. It's the same method. You're going to just cross left over middle, right over the middle, left over the middle. Shai right says she loves yelling and wants to cook together with the drill models to keep this up. Oh my gosh, of course. I love you, Shai Shai. Ellie's best friend just commented. I'm so glad you guys are watching. Well, um, so it's really the same method. They also think you can hear me. You can hear me, good. Yeah, it's so delayed. Is it delayed? It must be delayed. Um, so the left side's gonna go over the middle, the filling. The right side's gonna go over the filling. Left, right, alternating, just like a holla. Everyone wants a chance to be in the middle, right? Left over the middle, right over the middle, all the way to the top. So I'm gonna go, um, I will do straight across today, just to make it easy for you guys. Um, so I literally take my paring knife, I don't know if you can see this, and I just cut even about one inch or so. Does that work? Yeah, thanks, Ellie. One inch or so strips. Um, just straight across, all the way through. You don't want your dough to be too warm. Um, it will be harder to work with. Mine's actually like a little warmer than I like. You see how it's pulling? I like it to be defrosted, but a little bit colder. Um, so, and if you make a mistake and one, you have to cut. You don't Someone have to said cut. No sound, but I, maybe it's just your volume because everyone else can hear. Yeah, if the sound isn't working, check the volume on your computer. Um, that's how it's gonna look over here for this video. Um, that's how it should look now. Um, you do not have to cut. So if you don't want to cut, if that looks too intimidating or if you don't have time, fine. Just take the left side of your dough, the whole sheet, flip it over the spinach filling. Take the right side, flip that over on top, they'll seal to each other. Take your little paring knife and make four or five slits just down the top to let the steam, ex steam escape. Um, and then you'll have one big long barretto. When you're done, you'll cut into slices. Um, if you're doing my method with the strips, um, if you're doing my method with the strips, um, you're going to start at the bottom, and you're just going to take the left, and you're going to fold it like, um, I don't know, I'm not the best math, 45 degrees angle up, um, and you're going to take the right side, and you're going to cross that over. You're going to take the next one, she's going to kind of show you what I'm doing. And I just am gently crossing these strips, pulling slightly as I lift up and over just to hold my filling in, um, but not so tight. Sometimes there will be some gaps if there's a little more filling in one spot or one of the strips was cut a little bit you know, thinner or thicker than the other. Don't worry about it. Remember puff pastry means it's going to puff up 
as a base. So you're all good. No matter what happens here, it's gonna be perfect, okay? So I'm just slowly going from side to side, left to right, crossing over my filling. If you can see what I'm doing, I'm stretching it a little bit and pulling it a little just because I like it sort of neat and even. And just want to cross over all the way. Yeah, close to the top. So will you help me go with this? Yeah. So she's going to help us. Before I finish the top, I want you to see what I've done. So I've started at the bottom, left a little gap. We'll get to that in a sec. And I've just crossed and sort of weaved and made a braid all the way to the top. I'm going to show this video over here because I'm building over there. Let me turn this one a little bit. Yeah. All right. Now I've got some left at the top. You can, um, you're going to have a little bit of extra dough. There's a couple things you can do. Somebody said it looks professional. Oh, thank you. And you guys, yours should look exactly the same now too because I'm showing you exactly how I do it. Um, you're going to have a little bit left at the top. You can cut it off. You can crimp it. I just like to sort of crimp it and just tuck it under, kind mm. of like my holla if you saw from last week. I just, I don't know if you can see that, but I just sort of crimped it and tucked it under. And I'm going to flip it around and do the same thing over here. Um, my family loves the end piece because there's always a little bit more dough. So those end pieces, they may not look as pretty, but I tell you, those are the hot commodities when it comes out of the oven. So let's show them. Eliana's eating a feta and cheese baraka. And olive. Feta, no, feta, that's what I meant. Feta and olive baraka. How is that? Good. Good? All right. So here we go. This is our, let me turn it to the side. Maybe that even helps a little bit better. Can you see the, the braid? I hope so. All right. So this one, the same thing. Egg wash, which is your one egg with a little bit of water. I like to just mix again because sometimes you know the yolk and the egg, the yolk and the white separate. And when I brush it, I don't want to just stir my beautiful dough. So I start on one side and I follow the direction of that dough. Because if I use my brush and I try to go like this, the dough is soft at this point and it's really like pliable and, and delicate and I don't want to disturb my dough because it does look so pretty, if I do say so. So I just turn it around, and then I do the same thing, but I go that direction with the dough. You can also gently dab it on, kind of like with your hollow, when you don't want to disturb your braid. Um, you just want to be delicate. It is delicate dough. Not as delicate as phyllo, if anyone out there is using the phyllo dough, but it still is delicate um, dough, and you want to just be gentle with it. Want sesame seeds or no sesame seeds? Mm. Oh, no sesame seeds on this one, she says. All right. So there you have it. If I was putting sesame seeds, it would have seeds or anything you like on the top. Oh, everything bagel would be good on this. Anything would be good. I'll show this one too. I'm filming over here in case our Facebook Live doesn't work, so I can post it. But there you go. One spinach baraka. It's going to go into the oven. It's going to get beautiful and golden and puffy and delicious. Um, it's going to take longer to bake. Obviously, it's bigger. Um, it has more filling all in one place. It's going to take about 30-ish minutes. Um, but again, I check it after 15, rotate the trays, and then check it again. Um, the trick with the big ones is making sure that the bottom is fully cooked at the same time before the top rounds too much. If your bottom isn't fully cooked, you'll be able to tell it's sort of translucent and kind of gummy-ish still as this dough starts to cook. There's a lot of layers in the puff pastry dough. Um, some of the layers will feel cooked, but the bottom will still feel kind of gummy. You don't want that. So if your top is getting too brown, but it doesn't look done to you as you sort of lift, up, lift it up and look, lightly tend it with a piece of foil and give it a few more minutes. Do you like seeds on this one? I do. 
I like seeds, but this one said no. You know what? Maybe we'll do half and half. How's that? We'll do half and half. Why not? So, I I love sesame seeds. Um, it also looks really pretty though without seeds, just golden and puffy, and you see the braid, and it's really beautiful when it comes out. So I just added seeds on half. All right, this half has seeds. This half has no seeds. Um, I'm sorry I didn't make one in advance of this class. I just didn't want that much food because. There's only six of us at Shabbat. Um, if I was having company, I would have made more, but... The bracca was really good. All right, so that went in the oven for 15 minutes. I'm going to check in. I'm going to rotate my pan. Before I move on, everyone caught up? Anyone have questions? Does it look good? Are you thinking, oh my gosh, why did I waste my time? This is super easy. Or are you thinking, I still don't get it and I have more questions? Um, I heard there's a delay, so I'll wait a quick second um, to give you a chance to ask any questions. I wanted to show just a fun dessert um, recipe. Ronnie said love this. Ronnie, well, Ronnie, I love you. Um, so this is just a fun dessert one. Um, you can totally log off if you're not interested in dessert. Or you can hang out with us for a few more minutes because, you know, it's only 2.55 and who has anywhere to go, right, in quarantine? Um, and Shabbat's done now, right? Like, I made two, here, I'll show you my hollas. Ellie, bring me the hollas. I had, did a holla bake this morning for our camp. It was really fun. And so I made two hollas uh, this morning. They came out really nice. I did a three-strand and a four-strand just to... Show them. Okay, can you see? The sesame is the four strand and the sprinkle is a three strand. Call up. And then I have my second batch of dough. Which I, oh, whoa. You guys, I can see that it's risen. This is totally not a holo class, but look at that holo dough. How does that look? Um, wait, you have things. Okay. Whoa. Uh, love this. I can't wait for my pizza breakfast. I noticed you put it on the top rack instead of the middle. Should we do the same? You can put them on. Top or middle is great, not on the bottom. Look at that holiday. Um, a on. lot. Uh, I thought I tasted the first one. Yum. Kind of eggy though. If you find it too eggy, um, do one egg next time. Um, my taste tester loved it, and that's what works. But like I said in the beginning, this is a method um, versus a recipe. Maybe you put a little Wait, less cheese. Like a lot. Maybe your eggs were bigger. Um, but next time, remind yourself, okay, I'm only going to use one egg because that was too eggy for me. Okay, um, and Tammy said, I love you guys. Uh, how long and what, te what temp? Loud kids, sorry. Um, how long for the squares or how long for the big one? Okay, we'll get to, that's that. 400 degrees. Um, you can drop it to 385, which is sometimes the recommendation on the package if you want. Um, oh, and Tammy answered for she said 400 for 15 to 17. Thank you, Auntie Amy. Love you. Uh, she said, hi, I was 15 late because I was doing Camp Zoom. Will this video be saved and I can watch later? Hi, Ash. Why is Camp Zoom important? Do you have like 150 kids watching or something? Yes. I'm videoing it today on a separate video. I was going to upload it. Um, it's saved, but if not, we have another video going here. Um, but you can uh, shout out questions or text Ellie on the side and we'll answer if you missed the beginning. Okay, um, so fun, thank you. Um, wow, wow, my holo did not rise as much as that big one. I think that's it though. Okay, so the holo was just an interlude really quick while we caught up on questions. Um, so again, it's a method, use anything you like. Um, put um, any filling you have, anything you like, My Sarah said your mom's hollow is the best thing I've had in my life. Oh, fair tea. Yeah. My niece just said one of that sprinkle hollow is going in her house, so she's excited for that hollow. So I just stuffed those in the fridge while we were working on this one. I'm going to go back to my squares. Again, if you only have a sheet, use a sheet, and you can cut it up and it'll be delicious. I'm going to use squares just because I, I had them and they were open. And this is just a fun dessert um, treat that I'm doing just to show you that there's a lot of fun things you can do with the puff pastry and a lot of different barrecas. We've made um, apple pie barrecas a lot and they're super good. 
pumpkin pie barracas, they're super good. Cinnamon roll barracas. Um, you can make anything. So this is just gonna be a quick s'mores one. Um, and these, I'm gonna make them look more like Pop-Tarts than I am gonna make love them you, look. Love you, Ashley. Um, love you, Ashley. I'm gonna make them look a little more like Pop-Tarts than I am in the triangles, again, just for something fun. Um, I mentioned in the recipe last week, obviously, if you keep kosher and you do not use regular marshmallows, either don't do marshmallows or use kosher marshmallows, just as you know with kosher marshmallows, as you know with kosher marshmallows, they may not get as gooey. So depending on the size of your squares, and obviously if you're doing a big one, I would do the same thing. Um, I would fold, fill your filling down the center. Can these be reheated to eat, eat warm later for Yes, Shabbat? they can be reheated. And I recommend reheating in the oven or the toaster oven. Um, sometimes we'll do the microwave, but it's not as good. My girls will take them for lunch. If you put it in the microwave, it sort of lunch, becomes like soggy. It becomes soggy. Um, my girls will take them um, for lunch, um, just at room temperature. You know, I refrigerate them overnight, lunch gets room temperature, and it's, it's just, just they're good. Um, but yes, if you have an option of the toaster oven or the regular oven, I try to not you use the microwave it. that much anyways, but this is better. Um, you can freeze it. Yeah, you can freeze it. Um, you can freeze it raw if you want it. Um, like the individual ones or the big one, you can flash freeze them, stick them in the freezer to, to freeze for about an hour or so on a sheet, and then put them in a zip food storage bag to save for later, and then just take them out and bake them. Um, or you can cook it, cool it, freeze it, pop it back in the oven to reheat it. Someone makes a delicious olive and cheese. Someone else said this was great. Thank you. I'm so glad. Thank you for joining, and thank you for watching. And this has been fun for us. It's like you, for anyone that knows me, you know, and I said I'm not a very talkative, I'm an introvert, not an extrovert, so this is funny for me to be talking to myself, so that's why Elion is here, too, so I'm not talking to myself. Someone said air fryer. I don't have an air fryer, so if anyone does and you want to um, comment about the air fryer, please do. I don't have one. I have a convection setting, which is similar, and I use that for a lot of things, um, but I have no knowledge about how this works in the air fryer, so I don't want to give you the wrong information. So this is just s'mores basic s'mores or a version of should we set the oven for 400 for the s'mores one? yeah you can set the oven for 400 um your oven's gonna get a lot of work today mine's still in there let's see looks good um so this is fun again if you don't like chocolate or marshmallow make an apple pie one slice up some apples toss them with a little bit of flour a little bit of lemon juice cinnamon and sugar spoonful inside fold it over a little cinnamon sugar egg wash cinnamon sugar on top is delicious. This one I like to do marshmallow and chocolate filling and then before you serve them um, melted chocolate and then drizzle melted chocolate on the top. You could do rainbow sprinkles on top. You could do anything cinnamon sugar on the top of this. You could do melted chocolate with crushed bran crackers. Anything. So I'm going to make these, I said, more like Pop-Tarts. So instead of filling in the middle this time, if you can see, I'm going to put about a tablespoon, so maybe 10 or 12 marshmallows down. Why have I never thought to put strawberries on top of this? Down the left side, but leave yourself a little bit of border so that you can close it. Does that make sense? So not down the center, off to the side, but with a little bit of room to close your, your little pop tart. Your little, your s'mores pop tart. S'mores pop tart. All right, so you want to stick your marshmallows. You're going to use chocolate chips. I happen to have. Really ones. good Jerry Deli, which I don't normally have, but we happen to have gotten those. So I'm going to add about, you know, a tablespoon or or more maybe, you know, of chocolate chips down the middle. Just this is again to taste. If you like white chocolate, if you like peanut butter and peanut butter chips. I'm eating all the chocolate chips before I even They're so much better than normal chocolate chips. And fill them. So, shout out to Roger and Trevino. Thanks for that. Dave and Nancy. Hi, Dave and Nancy. I love you guys. Thank you for the support and for watching Shabbat Shalom. Hope you're all healthy. I should have started out with that. Isn't this just crazy, you guys? I miss having company for Shabbat. I miss our family and our friends. I'm turning this into a rant session. I miss. No, I'm not turning into a rant session. I just. I hope everyone's staying healthy and safe and keeping yourselves occupied with the 
So I'm baking things, right? Where's my fork going, guys? All right. All right. Clean fork. Clean enough. This is going to be one thing. thing. Yeah. I'm going to do two, and then Eliana's going to do two. I was just going to do one. Okay, I'll do three, and Eliana's going to do one. Oh, I can't. Let me. I'm just filming over here, too, because I'm trying to show. Oh, dear. All right. I'm going to do the fifth one in a second, too. I just didn't have room in the moment. So, again, before we used uh, the triangle method, we folded over diagonally. But now I'm going to just fold over from right to left. If you fold, if you filled them on the right side, then fold over from left to right, obviously. First, I use my fingers just to press it closed. Um, can you use cookie butter? You could use cookie like butter, for sure. So that would fun. be so good. Why not? Cookie butter would be awesome. Um, anything you have, strawberry, strawberry jam would be really good to make like strawberry pop tarts, um, or fresh strawberries probably even. Yeah, those look really good, you guys. Um, powdered sugar on top would be really good when they come out of the oven too. Oh, These, I, I shouldn't say homemade because clearly I, you guys watched this five minute pack. I did not you know, sit here and make this amazing fresh dough, which so many of you probably do, and you're laughing at me thinking, oh my god, that is like the easiest thing, she's calling this a recipe? No, I didn't call it a recipe, I called it a method. I kept saying it's not really a recipe. It's so easy. Stick anything yummy inside, puff pastry, it's going to be good. Let me just show you really quick, Alice, can you fold it down? Here's two of them so far done. And they look like homemade pop tarts, and they're gonna taste like melty, delicious, yummy. I'm gonna do this one over here. It's more. So Eliana's gonna just fold those over really quick. Oops. Get those Hold done on. for us. If you guys saw how messy our kitchen was right now, it's crazy. Oh, It's not sticky. So you just want to go ahead and fold those over. If you were using the sheet, totally fine. Fill it the way you did the other ones. You'll have like a gigantic s'mores, moreca, pie, pastry, pop tart. It all looks good, else. I'll get some cinnamon. Should I do cinnamon sugar or should I do melted chocolate? No, should chocolate? no, you should do chocolate drizzle. You should make a chocolate well, drizzle. And yeah, drizzle usually I top. do a chocolate drizzle on top. Um, so you take some chocolate chips, melt them in the microwave, 30 second intervals. If you want to make it really delicious, like a ganache, add a little bit of heavy cream. Mix that up. Once these are out of the oven and baked, you can drizzle them on top while it's um, to put. You could do Nutella. She loves Nutella. I don't like hazelnuts. You could fill them with Nutella. Look at these, you guys. Okay, ready? Same There's method. Egg, egg wash on the s'mores. We'll get in there. Yes. Uh, so, so delicious, so fun, so easy. So easy, so delicious. It'll be like so fancy. Everyone in your house, and when we can ever have company over again, which I'm waiting for. I love having company over. Um, I think there's a lone rainbow sprinkle from my holler. Joe floating in my egg wash. Um, what did I say? So, um, yeah, so fancy, so easy. Um, well, not fancy, but like. You know. I think you said how you miss having guests. Did I miss who said that? You. No, I don't know. I do miss having guests. Do you guys miss having guests? If you, if you usually have guests for oh, Shabbat. Oh, chocolate drizzle now? now? No, chocolate drizzle when they're baked and they're out of the oven. So this could be just egg wash, which is what I'm gonna do, or egg wash with a little bit of sugar on top or egg wash with a little bit of cinnamon sugar. But I'm just going to do plain egg wash. Show this video. I'm going to do plain egg wash, and then when they're done, see there, plain egg wash. When they're done and they're out of the oven, we will put some chocolate drizzle on the top. I'm going to just fill this last one. Hi, Mimi. Was, who's there? Mimi. Hi, Mimi. My mom's on. Hi, Mom. I love you so much. I wish I could be with you for Shabbat. Um, 
I'm just going to fill this last one because we had, we had, uh, was, oh, there, I was going to fill these with the feta and olive, wasn't I? Which one? That's okay, I have more in the freezer or I'll make the feta and olive okay. into, into the, into the, um, the big bracca. So I have another sheet to frost it right here in the fridge. And I have feta and olive mixture. So I will make one more big one. But that's it, you guys. It's really easy. The trick for those is to pull. Yeah. The trick for these, you want to make sure the dough's, you know, sort of sticks to itself. And just like with the cheese one, if it's not sticking, go ahead and use a little bit of water to get your dough. Can you brush that with egg really quick, please, while I check the oven? Okay, so this is looking so delicious, but it's not done. I'm going to... Pull it out to show you. Please don't burn my hand. Oh, you can't see it. You definitely can't see it. I'll fall for the camera. So it's like looking delicious, but you see how I, it's like translucent and gummy? That's what happens when the dough's not done. So I'm going to flip it around. I know it's going to need at least another 15 minutes. I gave it 15 more minutes. I will not keep you guys on this video because I'm sure you have better things to do. But I just wanted to show you. These are now going to go into the oven and they will be delicious and puffy and golden and um, ready to eat. I think I'm going to go ahead and pop off the video and take my last roll and go back to my feta and olive stuffing and I'm going to make one more big brekka and we'll just have a salad and brekka and hollow, which I got to attend to that hollow dough. That's, wow. This hollow dough has been rising for a while. How much longer for the big one? Rated. Um, the big one is going to need about 15 minutes. So it was 15, and I set it for another 15. So just like I said, I think in the recipe, 30, let's see, what did I say in the recipe, you guys? 25 to 35 minutes, yeah, depending on your oven. So 25 to 35, depending on your oven. If your oven's calibrated and it really is working at 400, it could be 25. How long should I cook these little s'mores ones? The little s'mores Same ones, thing. also I want to say 12 to 18 minutes. I know it seems like a range, but it just depends on your oven and the size of them and where exactly in your oven and all those factors. Um, I would set it Thank for 12, so check them again, um, see if they need a few more minutes. And um, that's it, we're gonna hop off. If you have questions, post them on the event page or shoot me a text or a, what's it called, PM or whatever? DM. PM? No, it's a PM in my Facebook private message. It's a DM and Instagram, and it's a PM and you know, your hollow dough roasts so beautifully. Can you show us another big one how to cut it and braid? That yes, I can. That if would take a while. Maybe her, just. I can do it really, really fast. Let's see here. Well, she's filming. She filmed the I video. I just stuck the. That's okay, I'll take it really fast. I just stacked the hollow dough in the fridge because it needed to. If have the been s'mores braided. are in a long one, thirty minutes. Yeah, thirty minutes or so. It depends again on your. Um, Thank you so much. Okay. We'll do one last super duper fast. I'm gonna put this in. Not yet, but you can even add it later. That's just not okay. Um, one more parchment, sorry guys. I prefer the they roll of the paper, paper but I only had the sheets left at the moment, so I'm gonna cover two sheets. And I'm going to unroll this last, sometimes the plastic gets stuck to itself, but it's really easy. You just start the plastic, unroll like this. Lay it down, and then just pull your plastic right off. One like funny, right off your sheet. You've got one full sheet of puff pastry dough. You don't need to roll it or do anything with it. All right, I'm using the rest of my filling. I actually am going to throw one little bit of mozzarella only because it got really eggy while it was sitting there. Because I added more cheese, which is salty, now a little bit more pepper, just 
to balance it out, and I'm just going to give that a stir. This was my first recipe, the feta and olive mixture. What was the other one also, feta? Spinach and cheese. No one asked that. I was just going to, oh, that's okay. I'm just going to fill that right down the center. Remember, I want to imagine it divided in thirds. And I'm going to just fill it right down the center. And I don't want to waste any because it's so good. Fill it right down the center and it's just enough for this big one. Left. Someone said thank you, house smells delicious. Well, I'm so glad your house smells delicious. It should smell delicious. All right, go back to that little paring knife. All right, the same thing. Even side, even slits, parallel slits on both sides. About an inch apart. So I just go up one side. You can also cut them on a diagonal. Um, going up the slits or diagonal going down. It's really like personal preference. Sometimes you have a recipe for pizza. I don't have it written out, um, but what I would do is if you want to use fresh tomato or you know fresh tomatoes and cheese, I would make a cheese mixture um, with fresh tomatoes in it and fill it like this in the center. If you want to do um, if you want to do pizza sauce, I would spread pizza sauce down first where I put the filling, and then put your cheese mixture and any fillings on top. So that's how I would do um, pizza, which is really good. Um, okay, so we're just going to start. Um, sometimes, really fun side note for um, like uh, Shabbat, well, today is Shabbat, I'll cut extra dough from the ends, and I'll roll them out, and I'll form the letters, and I'll write Shabbat, and I'll put them down the top of the big bracha. For Hanukkah, I've done like the letters of the dreidel, um, so you can, you can decorate the top of these barakas once you get comfortable with it, pretty things on top, and that looks really cool also. So I'm going to start at the bottom, and I just go up at a slight angle, um, about, you know, 45-ish degrees or so. I just sort of lift it up and over to cross, and then just go back and forth, left side. On the right side, hopefully you can see this. Um, if you didn't cut them exactly even, like I didn't do the best job right now, no worries. Like I said, it's puff pastry. It's going to puff up in the oven and it will all sort of expand and, and cover, cover all that yummy filling. Um, if you feel like it's too eggy, reduce it to one egg. If you feel like you don't like a certain kind of cheese, use the kind of cheese you like. Make it however it works. My family loves meat. That's their favorite. The meat breath is their absolute favorite. Um, sometimes we'll do this for Shabbat. We had a breath of Shabbat a couple years ago with friends. We made like 10 kinds of breakfast. And that was our dinner. And it was so delicious. All right, so here I do have a little bit of dough left. I'm just going to go ahead and just cut off the sides because I had a little bit of dough left. But I didn't need that much dough, and that's just because I had a little less filling, I guess, than I did the first time. And then just, like I said before, pinch these and then just either tuck it up or tuck it under. But now I have these little pieces left I can show you. I'm rolling out. And what are we making next week? <laughs> you guys must be so sick of me. I don't do anything different than, than you guys don't do in your kitchens, I'm sure. You should do something next week. So I'm going to roll that out. This will be fun. I had a little bit of that. Don't do anything. <laughs> My kitchen smells so good, you guys. It's made challah, challah, baking, challah dough, bracha, this, cheese, s'mores, everything. So I just decided to do something fun. I'm just going to make a heart. Gonna form it first on top. Laura, if you're watching still, you probably got bored of me. I'm bored of myself, you guys. And my daughter's bored of me too. So I'm just gonna make a really pretty heart. Feta olive bracha. A really pretty heart right on top. That's gonna go in the oven. 
a lot. If you guys are like me, I have two ovens, but one of them is for storage. So I'm like making my life difficult and using one oven, I'm gonna have to empty the oven. Oh, it's looking so good, but it is still not done. You see how beautiful and delicious that braid is? So good. But it's definitely not done yet, because I can see it's still a little translucent and running on the sides. I am going to drop it down, you guys. One drop to 385, just because I don't want it to brown too, too much on the top. Some people like it really brown. I want to just let it cook all the way through. So now i got a lot of stuff to go in the oven. We've got s'mores, Pop-Tarts. We've got feta and olive with a heart. And um, we're going to sign off. That's it. Shabbat shalom. Thank you, guys. Happy baking, y'all. Love you, and talk to you soon. Bye. Wait, let's try and see if there's a way to make sure that it stays. End it first. End it.